Hey fellow Backyard Boyers, Nick here. So I've been kind of off the radar for a little bit and I really want to get you guys up to speed on some of the things that I've been doing. So today I want to show you how to make a simple blank for making a stone pipe. Now I've been, really been getting into making stone pipes over the last couple of months and I've probably made about a hundred so far. So today we're going to be making a very simple preform. This can be then shaped into different styles of pipes. But the main thing here is making the draw hole and the bowl line up. So I'm starting off with a block of soapstone. This has already been pre-cut to about three by four by one and a half inches. And this is going to be perfect for making some small four inch hand pipes. Soapstone is really nice to carve because it's so soft. So I use a knife to do all of my marking. I start off by making one inch marks and then use a ruler to connect them. These are going to be my three main blanks from which I'm going to be cutting two pipes out of each. So now that I've got it marked, I'm going to take it over to my bandsaw and cut the blanks out. As you can see, the soapstone cuts really nicely on the saw. And I've sped things up just a little bit so you don't have to sit through it because I'm using a metal cutting bandsaw, which is really nice because it doesn't heat up the stone, which is something that a high speed wood bandsaw would do. Once I've got these blanks cut out, I go back to the ruler and mark a one inch and half inch segment on each side. This is going to give me two pipes with one side being one inch tall and one side being half an inch tall. I mark my diagonal lines on both blanks and then take them back to the bandsaw and cut them out. Now I'm using a bandsaw, but you could easily use a handsaw for this. And really, you don't save a lot of time just because of how soft soapstone is to carve. But if you were using harder stone, you would need some more specialized cutting equipment. A couple of the pipes I've made, I've actually had to use diamond saws just to cut the stone. Now that I have my four blanks, it's time to rough it out and make it an actual functional pipe. So I'm going to start off with this piece here. And the first thing we're going to do is drill the draw hole. Now this is one of the hardest things to do. Um, I just sort of eyeball it. I don't use a jig or anything. I just make sure that I'm going in high enough so that I don't run out the bottom or run too close to the top. And then it's just a matter of making sure that the drill bit runs in straight and doesn't go off from side to side. Once I've gone about halfway through, I clean off the drill bit and then use the soapstone itself to give me an accurate marking of where I need to stop drilling. Once I have my little mark, I continue drilling until I've gone down to the mark. And it's always better to drill a little less than you need than to drill too far and end up ruining the bowl. Once I've drilled down to the mark, I pull it out double check, make sure everything looks good, and then I take the drill bit, put it back into the pipe, and then sight down it. What I'm trying to do is see where the actual draw hole is ending up because I want my bowl to match up with the draw hole. So right now the blank is a little wider than it's going to end up, and that gives me some leeway so I don't have to have everything perfect. 
So now I take it to my drill press and use a modified countersink bit that has been rounded off to create a nice 3 8 inch diameter bowl. I make sure that the bowl is lined up with the lines that I've marked on the pipe and take a little bit at a time, cleaning it out and checking to see when I've finally broken down into the draw hole. So here you can see I've broken in and it's nice and lined up, so it came out perfect. At this point, the pipe is fully functional. So now I take a farrier's rasp and flatten out all of my faces. I like to do this so that I don't have any surprises later on when I go to carve this into a finished pipe. Because with all of my faces flat and smooth, I can finish it and have an idea of what the interior of the stone looks like. Are there any cracks? Are there any voids? Is this even going to make a functional solid pipe? Because it's really annoying when you go to finish out a pipe and then there's a crack that you could have spotted earlier on, but it was hidden by your tool marks. So that's why I like to clean everything off. And then I also go back and take off any sharp edges. That way, if I have them all in a box, because soapstone is so soft, they tend to chip and dent, having everything rounded off prevents that from happening. So now the pipe's pretty much finished. I'm just cleaning up some last details, just making sure everything looks good. So now that I've done shaping the pipe, I use a little bit of mineral oil to finish it off so I can see what's going on under the surface. This is really helpful because sometimes there'll be a crack or something that's hiding under your tool marks that you just can't see. And finally, I use a pocket knife just to break the inside edge of the bowl so that it's not sharp and it doesn't crack or crumble. Once I wipe off all the excess oil, the pipe blank is finished and ready to be turned into a finished pipe. So here's the pipe blank all finished up. Now I have some questions for you guys. What do you think about this style of video where everything is first person? I actually really liked filming this and if you guys want to see more videos like this, I'd be happy to do more on making more pipes because that's something that I'm really into right now, but also forging different knives and just doing different things around the shop. So please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.